So this week I decided to use Helix as my main editor. And I have to say that it has been a super smooth experience. Like I wasn't expecting to be to actually get to be productive with with this tool. I come from Seth and VS Code. Like I never used a terminal based editor. And the main reason why I wanted to try it is because uh, since I started using CellyJ or CellyJ, I don't know how you pronounce it, which is my uh, terminal multiplexer, I saw that you know there might be benefits if I have my editor in the terminal as well. Because with a multiplexer like CellyJ or CellyJ, you can have multiple tabs, multiple panels, floating tabs. You can do a lot of things. So it felt like it kind of made sense. So I just wanted to try it. Plus the benefit of you know using more your keyboard and having basically be more in that flow state, I guess. I don't know. The issue that I had is that, you know, the options that I knew about like NeoBeam and Emacs, they require a lot of setting it up up front and they are not beginner friendly basically. And I feel like Helix is, you know, an entire ex completely different experience to that. So if you are looking into using a terminal based editor, I recommend Helix if you are like a beginner like me or just, you know, want to try it out. And, you know, the things that it comes installed by default, like a team changer with, you know, a lot of teams to pick from, like you, you simply write a uh, theme in the, in the command uh, bar and you get like all the options. So you can switch between them with tab or shift tab, go back and, or just write the name like for box, for example, and you have it, everything there. Another cool thing that it has uh, right off the gate is like, the language server support. Um, if you do helix.help, I think it is, hx.help, sorry, help. It will show you the, uh, like all the already, I guess like all the pre-config that exists for every LSP, I guess, and which one you need. So I have Go here because I'm running Go in an X-Flake and I have that installed, but I have a different flake for TypeScript and Node, and I have that LSP installed there, and it just pick, picks it up right away. I don't have to do any anything. Like it's just like having that installed in the in the environment that you're working with, and you're ready to go. Another cool thing that it has is the uh, hints that you get every time you want to do something. Like if I press uh, space, it will open up a menu. I think my face is on top of it. It will open up this menu. Like you have all the actions that you can take from here. If you press G, which is like go to, it will, you know, give you all the instructions. So that's why I think like, if you are a beginner like me and you're a little bit of a burger with the key bindings and you don't remember them, this is great because now you know, you basically have this thing helping you through learning the bindings basically. So the main way that I use Helix to move around a file or like the motions of Helix to move around the file is by using the amount of lines that I want to move. So I will press, if I want to go to the beginning of the function, for example, I will press 15 and then press K to go up and you know, you're there. So that's what, the main way that I used to move around a file, like the number of lines that I want to shift to and then the direction that I want to go to, right? Like three J. Uh, one thing that I don't like or feels weird to me is that when you press B, for example, to go back and then press E to go to the insert mode, you're going to be at the beginning. So in the direction that we want to, but then if you are uh, here and you press W, so it looks like you are at the end of this selection. But if you press I to go into the insert mode, you go to the beginning again. So that's a little bit weird for me. Uh, I guess it's just a detail. But the, the reason why it's weird is because if I press W and I want to start writing at the end, I just have to press L to go another uh, character, right? So it feels a little bit weird. But I mean, maybe it's just me. Well, I know that if you press, I think, open bracket, it will show you more options. I think my face is again in the way, sorry. There, uh, you have more options like go to, previous diagnostic, uh, functions, stuff like that. So you can move to the symbols and things of the program language they're working on. So that's all related to moving inside a file. But if you want to move between files, Hatzelich uh, comes with this file finder that you can open by pressing space F and it will show you all the files in your directory and you can do search here like main.go for example i can go to the main file this is you know it's cool but if you're like me you're gonna miss the uh, having like a three 
like basically the folder structure of your project, like a visual way of seeing the tree uh, structure of your fold, of your project. If you're working on a, on a framework like Svelte, for example, that's, you know, you feel it more because you have file-based routing there. So depending on what folder you're working on, you need to, it, it's going to like serve the URL basically. So you define the URL structure of your server with folders. So it's a little bit tricky to work on a project like that when you don't have a way of visually seeing your folders. The fix for that that I have found is by installing um, Yassi and but because I was, I'm using Salvage, I can open up a floating window and I always have Yassi running here and I can navigate between the files with the same bindings that I have for my uh, editor. So J to go down, K to go up, L, you know, to get into the folder and stuff like that. And I can copy files, move them around or whatever I want. So that's kind of like the bypass that I have to that problem. It's not really a solution from Helix. It's like a, you know, workaround, but it's, it works for me. And it actually makes me more productive because in a normal editor, I will have to pick up my mouse to do that. And here I can do it with the same bindings that I use for same keys that I use for uh, moving inside a file. Uh, so when you are, want to open a file, you can, again, going back to the uh, file search, Let's see when I open up this scene manager, the compare scene. And if I want to open up this file in the main buffer, I just press enter. But if I want to op open it on a panel, so let's say main now, I can press control B and it will open a new panel for me that is on the vertical position. So you can also open it up in horizontal, but only psychopaths do that. So only vertical is all you need. So control B. Boom, you're there. You can keep open, opening files here like sound manager and it will create another row. And the way you move between these uh, panels is by pressing Control W, which is Control Window. And now your bindings for arrows or H and L to move around them. So it's uh, very intuitive the way it works. So you, you basically have to remember Control W or Control V and you're able to move around panels and open up panels as you want. Once the file you're working on is, you know, you're done editing that, you basically write it with, you know, the normal way that you will do it, W. Or in my case, I have a binding for space W to save. And if I want to close this, I just have to press space Q or just write uh, colon Q and that's it. So it's very intuitive. Like the way you navigate through panels, the way you find things, the way you search also. And again, if you stack the, what I showed you, like floating window with Jesse, it's another world. Like it's, it adds a lot of, you know, like, again, you, you kind of like do everything with the same bindings and it's very easy to like navigate your project that way. So yeah, I think Helix is definitely worth checking it out. Um, I think I'm going to start using it as my main editor from now on. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.